Hello, I'm Brian with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and I'm going to demonstrate the major differences between a go-to computerized telescope and a push-to computerized telescope, such as the Orion and Telescope line. We have a few in telescopes shown here, including the XX14i, the Starblast 6i, and the XT8i. I will be demonstrating the XT8i and how to use the major features of the Intelescope system, which is a push-to. But first, let me dive into some more detail and what the real difference is between a go-to and a push-to. There are two different types of computerized systems. There's the go-to telescope, which will automatically move the telescope and point to the object that you have selected because it is equipped with motor drives. It will also track that object. A push-to system, such as the Orion and Telescope, requires that you move the telescope manually by hand. You become the motor drive. It's beneficial for those who want to learn the night sky because even though the telescope is helping you locate the object, you still have to move the telescope by hand so you get a much better understanding of where the object is located in the sky. Some other key differences, because a push to is not equipped with motor drives, like a go to, it doesn't require a lot of external power. In this case, just a 9 volt battery for the object locator. A push to is also completely silent. It's using encoders to track the movement, but no motor drive. Once you get the hang of it, you can actually operate a push to like the Intelescope faster than a go to because, again, you are the motor drive. The Orion and Telescope system features high resolution encoders, which provide the accuracy to enable you to find any of more than 14,000 objects in the object locator's database. The setup is very simple and easy to do. Start by powering on the object locator. The first thing the object locator will do is ask you to point the telescope vertical. Point the optical tube, the telescope vertical, until it hits the vertical stop knob on the base. Here's a helpful tidbit. You don't actually have to be worried about putting the telescope base on level ground as long as it's a reasonable flat surface. All the Intelescope wants to know is that you have pointed the optical tube perpendicular to the base. So you can be on the slope of your driveway on your front lawn as long as the surface is reasonably flat. Point the telescope vertical, press enter. You will then be prompted to align the Intelescope on two different stars. These are the only two stars that you have to find yourself. And they shouldn't be too hard to find because they are going to be among the brightest stars in the sky. If you need assistance finding your first two stars, you can use the help of a very simple star chart, such as the Orion Star Target Planisphere. Locate the star through your finder scope first, then proceed to center the star in the eyepiece of your telescope by making small movements. Once the star has been centered, press Enter. In this case, I've selected Vega. Now let's proceed to the second alignment star, let's say Altair. Do the same thing, point the telescope, find the, tel find the star through your finder scope, proceed to center it in the eyepiece, press enter again. The object locator will say thank you and below that will display a W equals a value. You want that number to be less than 1 ideally, even better if you can get the number less than 0.5 which will ensure the accuracy necessary to have the object within the field of view of your eyepiece. Now that you've done that, your telescope is aligned. You now will know where in, the object locator will know where any of these objects are in the night sky. You don't have to enter the date, time, and location. The only time you have to enter the date is if you're going to look for a planet. In this case, let's say we want to find a deep sky object. I'm going to say Messier 42. I would hit M, 4, 2, enter. Now it will be displayed with a series of numbers. In this case, I'm showing 174 with a left-hand arrow and 36 with a downward arrow. So I'm going to move the Intelescope to the relative left. As the numbers count down, I know that I'm getting closer. If numbers are counting up, I know I'm moving away from the object. It's like warmer and colder. So I'm moving the Telescope closer and closer. And now 36 down. I'm moving the telescope down until I've zeroed out both directions. When both directions are zeroed out, the object should be within the eyepiece's field of view. That's how easy it is to use the push-to system. With the Intelescope Object Locator, you can select the object name or number designation from Messier New General Catalog or Index Catalog, or by object name for nebula, cluster, galaxy, planet, star, or your own custom user-defined database. 
But let's say you don't know what the object name or designation is. You could start by using the very useful tour function and select it for the month of the year you're going to be viewing, in this case, let's say January. And now you can scroll through, by using the up-down arrows, the most spectacular and noteworthy objects to view for the month of January. There's also a very useful feature. Previously I mentioned how the push to system is very useful for helping you learn the night sky, even though the computerized object locator finds the objects for you. You can manually find an object yourself with the sky quest and telescope and select the ID function and hit enter and it will search through the database and indicate what object you are looking at. It's very useful, so this means you can actually find the object yourself and have the Intelescope confirm what object you're looking at. In this case, the telescope is pointing at the star Altair. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video about using the Intelescope Push To system. I hope you found our video informative and helpful. Thank you again and happy stargazing.